Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three from the UK. And recently somebody asked me on Instagram how I managed to fit everything in, being a homemaker, being a wife, being a mother, filming for YouTube, having horses, having a dog, and all of the things that are in my life. Like how do I get things done? And first of all, I don't get everything done. Um, I kind of prescribe to the plastic and glass ball theory in that some things in my everything in my life is a ball and some of those balls are made of glass like the health of myself and my family physical and mental um feeding the kids feeding the animals and some of those balls are plastic things like i don't know um remembering to take the rubbish out or you know um i don't know these like housework is a plastic ball I need to make sure that there is, um, you know, enough plates for the kids to eat off of on one day, but if I don't feel like doing the rest, then I'm not gonna do it. So you have to work out which balls are plastic and which balls are glass. And also it helps to have a partner, in this case, my lovely husband, Phil, who I can throw a glass ball to. And I know that he's gonna catch it and he's gonna juggle that for me instead. And he might throw one back to me and that it's okay. Same with the plastic balls. And if I drop the plastic balls, then, you know, it's fine um but recently i started doing something called block scheduling and i got this from jordan page from fun um she has a youtube channel she's amazing it's like loads about loads of things about family life and budgeting and all of that sort of thing excuse me and i've got mine here i laminated it and turned it into a binder and um, it's actually just fallen apart today which is really annoying but uh, i can still show you actually makes it easier to show you so the idea is, it's very similar to the organized mum methods, um, organized time technique, with the exception that it's um, bigger blocks. So you separate your day into blocks. Um, you, Jordan Page suggests um, two to three hours, and the organized time technique suggests turning it into half an hour, half an hour blocks or 15 minute blocks. And I felt that that was too quick to transition from one thing to another for me. So I prefer the two to three hours. It also gives me more flexibility in that I know that I can drop some, that some of these, some of the, like each line is a ball and some of these are plastic and I don't have to do them. For example, you know, between six and 8 a.m. as you've got here, I don't have to exercise and I don't have to meditate. That is a choice that I'm making. And if I don't do them, then I'm like, Meh, maybe I'll be a little bit grumpier than usual but i'm gonna be okay um but things like giving the guinea pigs hay that is something that i need to do and when i forget that i then have to do it again later and it's just it's easier if i do it when i'm up there breakfast for the kids another one non-negotiable right so the block scheduling helps me to kind of stick to a rhythm throughout the day so I've got six till 8 a.m. and this is mostly self-care. So this is me having breakfast, taking my vitamins, exercising, brushing my teeth, washing my face, um, getting dressed. And then I come downstairs a bit further down in the list and I will spend some time at my altar doing some um, faith stuff and I'll feed the animals. I'll let the dog out to the toilet. And at the bottom here, it says unplugged, which means I try and not use my phone during that time. I don't usually succeed, but I try my hardest. And I think that that helps because um, oh, me. Oh. that helps because um, I'm not like getting stuck in the trap of social media and just like I get down a rabbit hole. Um, so then we move on to the homeschool segment and as you can see I've kind of all done it in uh, rainbow colors. <laughs> um, the homeschool section, so it says writing and reading book, maths, art and DT, art slash DT, design and technology, uh, give kids a snack to kind of remind me. To make sure that they're having it at 10 um rather than me going them going i'm hungry at half 11 and i'm going just wait till lunch oh no i didn't give them their snack like sometimes i would even prepare the snack and i would just forget to give it to them or tell them it was there which is like ridiculous like on those days when my head was just all over the place and i was just in this like it was like a snow flurry all the time like it was just i would forget something like to tell them their snack was on the kitchen side and one of them would eat all of the snack. That's happened on more than one occasion, more often than than, for, than ever, no one having a snack. So that's all of their homeschool done in that morning, in that two hour slot, 
everyone does the homeschool and Albert does a preschool themed activity. So then we turn over and then I've got this big chunk, 10 till 12. Uh, this is when I do my housework. Um, I I've just put cleaning. So I follow the organized mum method. So I've got more, I've got morning level one jobs. I do my level one jobs twice because the house just gets too messy. We're in it all day and it just gets too messy to only do them once. Then I do my zone cleaning and encourage the kids to do their chores. And then I put DIY. That's when I would ask Phil to do DIY if he was home as well. Um, the kids chores, if they get them done in a timely manner and reasonably well for their age and ability, then they get to have half an hour. Of, and they've done all of the other things on their checklists, which I will show you as well in just a moment. Then they get to have the rest of this time, usually about half an hour, um, on on screens they get to use the tablet or they get to go on the xbox or the laptop or whatever whatever like so they're all on something and it means that i can get that last 30 minutes a 30 minute power clean and get the rest of the stuff done um so then we move on to lunch and i realized that i wrote 12 a.m to 1 p.m and i meant to write 12 p.m to 1 p.m um eat lunch as a family and then i've put read a book together i'm trying to start this thing where we have lunch together obviously phil is usually at work so the lunch the four of us me and my three children and then i sit and read them a book and it might just be like a mega mog book or something nothing big um maybe a julia donaldson like the gruffalo or stick man that seems to be a favorite at the moment and i just try and read to them um my eldest can read very proficiently and my middle one bessie is trying really hard to learn to read so, you know, but they still like being read to. I think everyone likes being read to. And, excuse me. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to implement that. And again, I drop, it's a plastic ball. Sometimes, like, you know, the, giving my kids lunch is a glass ball. Reading the book to them at lunchtime is a plastic ball. Quite often, I'm dropping that plastic ball and just going, you know what, I just want to eat my lunch in peace. Shh. <laughs> um, so then the afternoon i try and have an outing in this afternoon so i will run any errands that we need to run um if phil is home then i will um then i will do that and go i'll go maybe out by myself uh we walk the dog i try and do the horses in this time um since i started block scheduling i haven't managed to do the horses in this time just because the kids have been a bit manic um learning the new schedule and adjusting their routine which is really difficult for children with autism um and it reminds me to give them a snack at 3 p.m. to get them through till dinner and anything like errands, appointments, play dates, they should all be at this point if possible. Sorry about that, my uh, uh, back camera virtual giant. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit for you so you can see me better. Oh, there you go. Okay, so where was I? Oh, I'll run this one was nine. So then 3.30 till 6.30, this is, I've just, I've never named this one, extracurricular slash project slash work and dinner. Um, so this is the section of the day when the kids would have ballet, taekwondo and then rainbows on Zoom at the moment. But I am so tired, I'm sorry I keep yawning. I'm just trying to power through this without editing as much as possible. Um, so this is when I would give them a little bit of screen time. They're allowed to watch an evening show. They might play a game on the Xbox or the tablet or something instead. Um, whatever they want really they're just allowed to have screens they can do whatever they like um this is when i might do filming or editing um right now i'm not doing it at this in this segment uh because i was essentially interviewing plumbers today to fit a radiator um this is when i'll also sit down in this time if i'm not doing rainbows which i'm a leader for um then i would be replying to your comments and emails because i get a lot of emails from you guys and i love them and i try and reply to them like promptly especially if they're urgent and you need help um and i try to reply to everyone's comments i haven't done this for a little while that to me is kind of a plastic ball because i know you guys are super patient and super supportive and lovely so you know if i'm not replying to you that i hope you know that i will reply to you eventually i try to reply to everybody um this is something that i will do i think i'm gonna sit down this weekend and i'm gonna reply to everyone properly um cook and eat dinner and i know it seems silly to um write these things down but it might do to some people, but I feel like um, having a neurodiverse brain, I kind of need to remind myself sometimes that these things need to be done. And if I'm looking, if I'm at this point in the outing section and I glance at this before we go out, I'm gonna go, you know what, when we get in, the first thing I need to do is put dinner on. And then I know that everything else is, cause that's a glass ball and then everything else is plastic and it doesn't matter. Um, and then it also reminds me that the kids
It also reminds me uh, what projects the kids need to be doing. And again, it's another bit for DIY for Phil um, if I need to. And I say that Phil's doing the DIY, like I could do it, but he is better. And I know that he kind of thinks about things better. Like he, he thinks things through more thoroughly. So when he is drilling a hole for something, I know that I could do that, but he's, I'm likely to screw it up more than he is, so. So then the next bit, we're moving on to our bedtime routine, which we used to put them all to bed together. And our eldest, who is almost nine, was kind of a bit like, what? Why am I going to bed at the same time as a kid who's nearly four? So we were like, okay, something needs to be done here. So Albert now goes to bed, uh, starts go goes upstairs to go to bed at half past six and is in bed by seven-ish. Again, the times are loose, but the routine is not. Um, then Bessie goes up about quarter past seven and is in bed by quarter two, eight. And then Al Charles goes up at the same time. And they we've also implemented them having baths every night, which we used to just bath them a couple of times a week. Um, because when they were very little, they had really dry skin and the baths made it worse, so they would just have a little wash. Um, but we kind of thought, Charles is almost nine, he's closer to being a teenager now than he is to being a baby, so that kind of baby routine doesn't work for him anymore. We want to encourage him to be having a bath or a shower every day as he heads into, as he's now kind of a tween, as they call him, as they call it. Uh, so I want to be encouraging him to you know bathe or shower every day um so we need to start it now so by the time he's like 13 14 and he's starting to smell like a teenage boy he may he will smell like a clean teenage boy <laughs> um so this last bit is my evening this bit here is my evening routine this is what i'm doing now i can do my evening level one jobs but that is a plastic ball i am dropping that i am not doing it right now i don't think phil's gonna do it right now either um, editing videos, that's what I'm doing here. I'm filming this and I'm trying to film it without editing. So, uh, you know, it's gonna be a bit more raw and a bit more rough, but you're seeing me yawning, being completely real. There's no gonna be editing done on this. <laughs> um, so I get meat out for the next day. That's not necessarily a reminder for me, that's a reminder for Phil because he, that's kind of his unspoken job. But the schedule is in view for him, so he might look at it and go, oh yeah, I need to get the meat out for the next day. Feed the animals, make lunches for the next day. If it's a day when I will, when I want a packed lunch in the morning, um, in the afternoon, if I want a packed lunch at lunchtime for the children, then we will make it, try and make it the night before. Um, watch shows, that's a reminder for me that it's okay for me to sit down and watch TV. And then I've written here, Horses, if not done earlier, refill vitamins. I haven't refilled my vitamins in a while and I kind of figured again, that's a plastic ball that can be dropped. It's not the end of the world. And then finally, I've got my nighttime routine here and it says meditate, chat with Phil. And I know it seems silly to have scheduled in time to sit and chat with my husband, but I was, we were told a story on our wedding day by Philip's best man. He's also his brother, my brother-in-law who basically described marriage as a rose garden. And if it's not tended to every single day by both gardeners, then it's not gonna bloom to its full potential. And that's something that we've lived our marriage by, I think, more than anything the vicar said to us or that our parents said to us or anything like that. It actually really was, like Colin really spoke to us, spoke to our hearts and um, touched us like to our very core and I feel like that's something that we've lived by in our marriage is you know our relationship is a beautiful garden and it'll only stay beautiful if we both work really really hard and put the effort in every single day um and we looked into love languages and all of that sort of thing and we work really hard to to speak to each other um using each other's love languages and tend that rose garden so that's one of my ways of tending the rose garden is scheduling in this time before we go to bed to just sit and chat with phil and really kind of hear what's in each other's hearts and and what's been going on in the bits of our lives that are separate so him being at work me doing this for you guys this is what i class as my work so like He's like, oh, you know, how's your videos going? Like, what's your next video about? And we'll talk about things like that. And he might give me some ideas. He might ask if there's anything he can do to help me, which is always really lovely. And I really appreciate that. Um, 
and I might ask him about his day, he might tell me about a difficult funeral that he's been on or a sad situation um, that he's encountered and and we can support each other through that. Um, and yeah, so that's why I schedule in. I make sure I schedule in time to actually sit and talk with each other. And sometimes it's just sitting and cuddling rather than chatting. And you, we might start talking about the show we're watching, but actually just sitting and being together rather than being together, being together. Um, let Lily out to the toilet, that's the dog. You know, sometimes I forget and I'm like, did you let the dog out to the toilet? And he's like, no, did you? Oh, I've got to like, get the dog out to the toilet. Um, remind me to wash my face because sometimes I'm like, oh. And I do have, um, it's not very e environmentally friendly, but I have um, wipes to wipe my face rather than a full face wash because some nights I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna wash my face, but I know it's really good for my face to do that. So I just grab a wipe, a face wipe, and I wipe my face. And then I'm like, I wash my face, gold star. Um, I've also put in here brain dump. Now a brain dump is you have a notebook by your bed with a pen and before you go to sleep write down everything that's on your mind whether it's like wouldn't it be cool if cows are made from candy floss? Genuine thing I wrote on one of my pieces of paper recently. Um, to, uh, things you might have to do the next day, things you want to research, things you want to look up. Do not sit in bed and do them. Do not sit in bed and research those things. Write them down on a piece of paper and when you wake up in the morning if they are still important to you then do them in your appropriate section but don't do them at bedtime and this is almost like a i'm telling my future self this because she forgets this um and i put journal so i have two types of journal i have a gratitude gratitude journal where i try and write three things every single day that i'm grateful for um i find that at the end of a really hard parenting day when i'm just like oh I will try and write something that I'm grateful for, specifically surrounding the children, um, also around my husband or anything else in my life. If I've had a really stressful day, maybe I have, you know, been supporting a friend or a family member, and um, I'm really tired and just feel like, you know, sometimes you feel like you're just doing a lot of giving. And um, on days like that, I sit and I go, okay, today was really stressful but what has been good and that's what i'll write in my gratitude journal i mainly do it because i want my children to look back and be able to look at it when i'm gone and go oh wow these were the little things that our mum noticed about us and that she was grateful for um specifically grateful for this child because of this thing that they did and like oh i did that for my mum and it made her happy like oh <laughs> um i want i want to have that kind of um connection i bid them to have that connection to me when i'm not here anymore and I hope that my journals will do that. I also moon journal, which means I have certain journal prompts for certain types of them, certain times of the month um, around the moon cycle. So I do new moon, first quarter, full moon and last quarter. And I journal appropriately throughout. Um, at the moment, there's kind of a theme because we're working towards something specific. Um, and I'm just kind of talking about that and talking about my journey towards that. And again, that's something for my children to have when I'm not here anymore, so they can have an insight into my life and how I thought about things and, and my experiences with them as their mother. Um, and then the big one here is sleep. Uh, this is just reminding me that I should be in bed by 10.30. <laughs> Um, again, I'm getting better at that. I think I um, I have a app on my phone that tracks my sleep and I turned it on at 12.48, um, 12.48, 22.48, so 10.48 yesterday, which is earliest, one of the earliest bedtimes I've had in a while. I was really proud of myself. <laughs> So um, I also follow the organised mum method, as I said, and I um, got an idea from Lindsay from Hope and Homeschool about having a mom binder. Now I don't call it a mom binder, we just call it the binder or the house binder because I don't feel like all of the things in the mom binder are just my job as the mum. They're nothing to do with me being a mum, they're to do with the fact that I am a person who lives in this house and that's why it's not a mum binder, it's a house binder. Um, it's also Phil's binder because he also lives here and that's not how it works. We Everything is 50-50 or 100-100. We don't split stuff up. There's no, well, you stay home all day so I don't have to do any cleaning or anything like that. So I keep it all in here um, and I kind of made it all, fan made it all fancy. So that's a cloth <laughs> and you've got um, laundry day, so you have all these pegs, and the kitchen day is utensils, and the 
lounge day is a sofa and and, and the garden day is gardening sort of that kind of thing i went a bit crazy about it on canva and then laminated it and it was all just a bit dramatic but it was really cool so that's how i fit everything in um i've been doing some massive decluttering downstairs and i will share that project with you in um one of my um one of my later videos when I've actually, I've been kind of doing bits and bits, videoing bits and pieces um, as I go along so you can see that, but we're kind of doing some DIY and some house maintenance projects at the moment to make the house more homely and to change rooms around. Um, so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you in the future, but because of this project that I'm working on, it's, it's taking me away from doing the scheduling like this. So I'm trying to, um, work on that, work on these products as quickly as I can so I can get back to it better. Um, <laughs> wish me luck. So that's how I fit everything in and again as I said I don't fit everything in, I fit in the things that are important to get done. Um, how do you run your home? Do you have a schedule or are you a go with the flow kind of family? Are you one and you wish you were the other? Um, if you are a go with the flow kind of family or descending into chaos kind of family which is what we were when we were going with the flow um, and you feel like you want to learn more about lock scheduling um, check out Jordan Page and her channel she has a video about it as well um, and I would gladly kind of send you some of this material so you can make your own um, I can't wait to see you on Monday I'm hoping we're gonna have a science video for you um, in partnership with MEL science just super duper exciting so have a great weekend and i will see you on monday bye i really am going now i'm just using my phone as a remote let's try again shall i bye <laughs>